In this video, we're going to complete the AGS 101 mod for the Game Boy Advance. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. Alright guys, so we've got our Game Boy Advance here. I've had this sitting around in a drawer for a very long time and I've been meaning to do this mod and I figure now is as good a time as any. Uh, as you can see, it is completely scratched up. The casing itself looks absolutely horrible. Uh, the screen itself, the lens is all scratched up, the case is chipped. So I figured we may as well get this all swapped out, put a new housing on it and put the screen from the Game Boy Advanced SP in there. Now you need to make sure that you've got the AGS 101 model SP. Alternatively, you can always purchase the screens from a third party vendor. So for this mod, we are going to need a pair of precision flush mount side cutters, a set of precision tweezers, an electronic screwdriver kit, and that's gonna have everything that we need right in there. A craft knife or an exacto knife of some sort. We're of course going to need our soldering iron. A little bit of solder. We're going to need a replacement shell for our Game Boy Advance. This one specifically came with a glass lens and with all the parts that we need inside of it as well, all the replacement buttons. We're also going to need the replacement Game Boy Advance sticker for the back of the shell. There is going to be an LCD conversion ribbon that we're going to need to purchase. Now be careful because there are two different versions, a 32 pin version and a 40 pin version, but the sellers will help you identify which one you need. We're going to need of course our Game Boy Advance SP for the donor screen. And we need our Game Boy Advance. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is remove the rubber pads that conceal the screws that hold the LCD in place. Then we're going to flip it over and we're going to remove the screw holding the battery compartment in place. Now we can just go ahead and pop that battery out and set it aside. There's going to be a screw in the battery compartment along with a screw along the bottom and four screws holding the shell in place. We're going to remove all six of these screws. Then the back shell should just pop right off. As you can see, we've got three screws holding the main board in place. We're going to need to remove these. Next, the main board will just pop right on out. Be careful not to damage the flex ribbon for the LCD. There are going to be two pin connectors holding the ribbon in place. We're going to need to go ahead and pop those out for the ribbon to slide out. Now we need to remove the five screws around the LCD of the Game Boy Advance SP. The rear protective cover should pop right on off. And we can set that aside. And there's nothing else holding the screen in place. We can go ahead and pop that out. Now you're going to notice that there is a lens attached to the LCD here. We're gonna just need to pry that off nice and gently not to damage the LCD screen. Also on the back of the LCD screen, there's going to be another rubber pad that needs to be removed. So we're just gonna go ahead and peel that off. Now what we need to do is grab that conversion cable and we're going to attach it to the ribbon from our LCD. It just slides in and you just have to pop it in place. Now we need to grab our Game Boy Advance and start to disassemble it. First thing that we need to do is pop out the batteries and the battery cover.
Next, we've got six screws around the housing that needs to be removed. So we're going to pop those out really quickly. There's one more screw in the bottom of the battery compartment that needs to be removed, so just make sure you get that out. And now the back cover should pop right on off, and we can pretty much discard of this since we're not going to use it anymore. Next, we're going to remove the side guards and the L and R buttons. We're also going to remove the power switch and set that aside too. Now we're going to remove the old LCD ribbon. We just pop the two connectors out and we can slide the ribbon right on out. There are two screws holding the board in place to the front housing. We need to remove those. Now our main board should pop out with no trouble at all. We don't need the front housing anymore unless you plan on reusing the buttons. In my case, my replacement shelf came with them, so I don't need them. I'm just going to get rid of this. Now we're going to grab our new housing, and we're going to need the front cover of our new housing. We're going to set everything else aside. There's going to be some stuff that we need to trim on the back of the front housing. So we're going to need to remove this entire bottom part here. Along with inside, you can see a slightly small raised edge that holds the LCD in place. We're going to need to remove that as well. What we're going to do is use our craft knife or X-Acto knife just to trim around the edges that we don't need. And then we're going to grab our precision side cutters and we're just going to go ahead and cut all the pieces that we don't need out. Don't worry about it being perfect, we can always clean that up later with our X-Acto knife or with our craft knife. The idea here is that you want it to be as flush as possible. There it is, perfect. So that is all that we need. Now we're going to go ahead and re-put in the buttons to our shell. It's important not to forget the magnetic pads, otherwise your buttons will not work. Now we can grab our LCD and we can place it right in the shell. It fits almost perfectly, as long as you press it right up against the top, you should be good. In terms of the ribbon, it's a little bit long, so we need to kind of make an S shape with it and stick it to the back of the LCD. This will allow it all to fit in there. Now we're going to reconnect the LCD cable. You just pop it in, and then we just need to attach our two screws. Now we're going to put our L and R and side panels back in. We're going to reattach our power switch, and we're going to test to make sure that it does work. Perfect. Now we've got a wire here that needs to be soldered to one of the pads. As you can see, there is a DA1 pad which has three connectors attached to it. We want to solder this to the top left hand corner pin. This is relatively easy to do, just apply a tiny bit of solder, heat it up, and the line should stick right to it. Just be very careful and take your time with this process. Now we just want to route our wire around some of the capacitors so it stays nice and tight on the board. And now we just need to reattach our rear housing. So we're going to pop that on. And now we're going to reattach our seven screws that was holding it in place, including the one inside of the battery compartment. And now we need to attach our lens. There is a little pocket here that we can remove that will allow us to dry fit the lens onto the case to make sure that the screen is put in the right place. So we can go ahead and drop it in and see how it looks and it actually lines up perfectly. So now we just need to remove the adhesive cover 
and stick the lens in place. Make sure to apply a little bit of pressure to it so it sticks in nice and strong. And now we can go ahead and remove the plastic film protector. And there's our screen. It looks absolutely fantastic. Now we just need to place the rear sticker on the back of the housing. And there it is. This is our reskinned Game Boy Advance with the AGS 101 screen mod. Now let's go ahead and see how this screen looks. I am going to make note that trying to record the screen doesn't quite do it justice. It does look much sharper and it looks a little bit pixelated in the video, but it definitely looks very clear in person. This is a mod I recommend for anybody who owns a Game Boy Advance. And I can't even think of anything that would make this any better. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.